All right, good evening, everyone here and those on the video. Good whatever part of the day it is. Here it's a Sunday night. And since it's a Sunday night, we're going to continue on with the Gospel of John. Yeah. Woo whoop. For the Gospel of John. All right. I got one woo. <laughs> one woo. -hoo. All right. All right. There's two more. All right. Now we can have church. So, um, Tonight we're going to look at John 18, 19 through 21. Um, it shouldn't be a very long study tonight, which is fine, because some of us have been running a marathon for the last 48 hours, so we're, we're all ready to <laughs> shut down. But we are now going to look into Peter. Um, uh, we were looking into Peter denying Jesus. Now we're going to look at Jesus being questioned. And... Um, there's not a whole lot of jumping back and forth with the different Gospels in comparison because John's unique in what it brings out here. So I'm going to read uh, verses 8, 19, 20, and 21 of chapter 18 of John, and uh, we'll, we'll get started. So here we go. This is Jesus being starting to be interrogated. The high priest then asked Jesus about his disciples and his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spoke openly to the world. I always taught in synagogues and in, and in temples where the Jews always met. And in secret, I have said nothing. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. Indeed, they know what I said. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you loved us so much and you were obedient to the Father. You came down here to help us and to show us who you are and to help us understand who you are and who the Father is. And Lord, you did the most loving thing. You obediently went to, to the cross for us so we can be saved. Lord, I just ask that each and every person who's, just li who's listening to me, Lord, and listening to you, listening to your word, will be changed by the word that your spirit breathed out. And Lord, we lift up our country to you, Lord. We're still in this crazy year of 24 and the election season and all the political shenanigans and everything else is happening. And Lord, the powers that be would love for us to tear ourselves apart and get into some type of civil war and, and discord. And, and Lord, we just ask for your gospel to reign in this hour. We ask for your peace to be in people's hearts. We ask that society, Lord, will look to you. And Lord, we'll, we'll, we'll see through the lies and the propaganda and everything else going on with the satanic world order that's trying to take us down. And um, Lord, we just ask that you speak and you win. And we already won because we've been to the cross. And now we ask for everyone else to win too. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Verse 19 again says, the, the high priest then asked Jesus about his disciples and his doctrine. So, if you look closely at the text, he's talking to Annas. And then he's going to send him to Caiaphas. So, and, and I'll show you all that here in a second. But first Annas talks to him and then he goes to Caiaphas. If you match it up with the other synoptic gospels, or the synoptic gospels, you see that there's a time that... Uh, Peter denies him, and then they haul him, they finally get him to the other high priest, and that's where the synoptics pick up. Uh, they, don't, they don't show this one, where Annas gets to talk to him first, and, um, and that's how I put it together, because to me, it's, yeah, it's, it's John's bringing out information that the other ones didn't have, and he was there. There's going to be a big note on that. So I believe he's talking to Annas, and then Peter's going to deny him in the same scene, because John keeps jumping back and forth in different scenes. And tonight, the scholar answers, why is he doing that? And the simple answer is he's witnessing it all happened at the same time. So, so, um, <clears throat> so anyways, um, now he's talking to the, to the other high priest, the, uh, the, um, the father-in-law of the high priest, and then um, he's going to head on to uh, Caiaphas later. So here we go. The only action word here is asked or questioned. It's a verb. It's aorist. It's active. So 
You can just take it as a past tense. The narrative moves forward in John in the aorist tense. Pretty much what the aorist tense means it happened. So, all right, cool. Greek has four past tense. <laughs> so, here you go. All right. I don't think we're going to deal with any more of those. No, we're not. Yep. Okay, moving on. So the scene changes back to Jesus' interrogation by, by Annas. You're like, well, why do you know that, John? We'll go to verse 13. Then they led him away to Annas first. See that? <laughs> there it is. And he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. All right. Then you go to 24. Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. There you go. So, Annas is also high priest, who was, uh, which we see outside of this text, and we see this in Luke's writings. And again, people debate this stuff, they talk about this stuff, they, you know, which one's true, and yada, yada, yada. To me, if you just put it all together, it's, it's telling you something. It's just, there's more information outside of it that helps you understand what's going on. So if you look at Luke 3, 2, it says, While Annas and Caiaphas were high priests, there you go, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. And if you go to Acts 4, 6, you see, every, you see all three people in this story, all, all in a different scene now with the, with the, uh, with the apostles. Uh, starting to preach in Acts. So you go to 4 6, as well as Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, remember they're both, they're sharing it. John, that could be the apostle because he was in their circle, and Alexander, and as many as were of the family of the high priests were gathered together at Jerusalem. So, so later on, which we've already seen, he will turn him over to Caiaphas, who was also the high priest. All right. Now back to John. Look at verse 13. And it says it. He was led away to Annas first, and then he went, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest. And then let's go to 11, 49, and 51. So Caiaphas, back when, after Lazarus was raised from the dead... And everyone was freaking out. He's like, no, you guys remember my prophecy? Uh, and here it is. And one of them, Caiaphas, being high priest that year, said to them, you know nothing at all. And then he talks about how it's expedient for one person to die for the nation. You get down to 51. Now this he did, did not on his own authority, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nations. Mm -hmm. So... So who's, who's high priest? Well, Annas and Caiaphas, they're both sharing the duty of it, all right? So it's kind of like me and Mel, we share the duty of pastoring this church, all right? So, yeah. Here we go. It was very possible to see that both scenes are in this courtyard were, 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 were the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the other another disciple all right john here is the disciple whom whom jesus loves he's the disciple who lead on jesus breast he is the disciple uh sometimes he's the other disciple or another disciple all right so here we go and back in verse 15 and simon peter followed jesus and so did another disciple now that disciple was known to the high priest and went in with jesus into the courtyard of the high priest okay so, here's that no note I was telling you about. John's there. Where do we believe John's standing? We believe he's standing next to Jesus while he's being interrogated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where's Peter? He's, he's in an earshot or a, you know, a, of the courtyard. Most likely, Jesus is in a, in, a, in, a, in a room where you can see out on the courtyard. In the courtyard, there's a little you know, makeshift shelter. You know, uh, the Passion of Christ really works with that scene, and I think they do a very good job on it. So, when Jesus is being interrogated, according to Luke, he was able to look at Peter when he denied him the, that last time, and Peter went out weeping bitterly. So, again, where's John? 
It is very possible that he could be in view of these scenes, these actions playing out at the same time. And that's how I take it now. Now that I've studied this out and looked at it and thought about it, yeah, sounds good to me. Luke uh, twenty-two sixty-one. 61. Then the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the words of the Lord, how he said, he had said to him, Be, uh, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And then, of course, Peter went out weeping bitterly, and it happened. So, that makes sense. What is John doing here? He's telling you what he saw from his perspective. So, there we go. I take it that way, and whatever I don't understand, I'll know in heaven. Amen. <laughs> the two-part question, the two-part question is now asked, and it's about his disciples and his doctrine, which the readers know that he must he must be the one to die back in verse 14. Now, it was Caiaphas who advised the Jews that it was expedient for one man should, should die for the people. So we know that, that Jesus is going to get crucified. And I do agree with the scholar that, that the way John writes, he writes as if you already understand the first three Gospels. So John writes this as in helping you understand what he knows and what he's seen so you can believe, right? Because what's the big word in John? Believe, yeah. So he's giving you his perspective and what he saw, and this is what he saw. And now he knows that the, the, the readers have, are reading along, they know the gospel, and they know that one's going to die. But one of his disciples has been questioned already, and of course that is Peter. He's already denied, denied knowing Jesus once, that's in 17. Then the servant girl who kept the door up said to Peter, you are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? And he said, I am not. So, so, so the discipleship, the disciples are being questioned, but we remember that they're actually being kept safe. More on that here in a bit. Back to Jesus. What was this two-part question? You know, they asked him about his disciples and they asked him about his teaching. His teaching will speak for itself. Amen. <laughs> So go to go to seven seventeen, and he pretty much will said that. If anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine whether it is from God or whether I speak on my own authority. So, you know what? How about I just stop and tell you guys something? When you read the Word of God, you know it's the Word of God. When you read any type of, of writing that's outside of the Word of God, you know that it belongs outside of the Word of God. There's a lot of questions about all the extra writings around the Bible time, and then, of course, a couple that were written two, two or three centuries later, which are completely false writings. Um, I was told this in Bible college, and I was also told this on the Christian radio station years ago, and a, and a teacher was teaching and they, and they both, both, both places were teaching the same thing. Read it. I dare you. Because you'll see that the Jesus they're portraying is not the Jesus that got a hold of you. So, so there's some apologetics for you. You know when you're reading the authentic word of God. You know that this is the real Jesus. You know that this is the Jesus that saved you and, and, and has now been leading you through your life. Amen? All right, so it's... It, his teaching will speak for itself, right? Yeah. And the high priest obviously does not know know it, but his but he is afraid of it. They're all and they all of them are afraid of it, and it could it could have to do with why their plan was to get rid of it. So you guys remember Caiaphas and his prophecy? Let's go back and look at it in 11. Now we're going to look at 48 and 50. If we leave him alone like this, everyone will believe him, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and nation. And then 50, after he starts to talk about his prophecy, he says, Nor do you consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and not for the whole na not and not just that, but for the for the whole nation should perish. So what was it? What was right in his prophecy? There was, he was he prophesied completely correct. Mm -hmm. 
It's just his understanding of his prophecy was different. <laughs> they thought, well, if we get rid of Jesus, we can get rid of this problem, and the Romans won't kill us. And the Romans won't go ahead and just take over this place and just and take this nation away from us. By the way, after they rejected Jesus, Jesus prophesied that that would happen in 70 A.D., and 70 A.D. happened. <laughs> yeah, so... So their fear was a real fear, yeah, but unfortunately, they missed their Messiah. Now, this is a good time to bring in, the Bible says 365 times, do not be afraid. <laughs> so if you're of God, you don't live in fear. And if, if he's leading you to do something, or he's leading you into what he has for you, yeah, it may be dangerous, it may be scary, it may go against the norm, it may go against the grain, Society may not like it, but you know what? He's going to take care of you. Amen. <laughs> All right, going on with that. His life and the others who know him are in danger. That's true. Because what are they questioning? They're questioning his disciples. But he, he has them taken care of. We'll talk about that here in a minute. 12, 10 through 11. But the chief priest plotted to put Lazarus to death also. I'll just stop there. Isn't that sad? You were dead for three days, you get raised back, and now the now your people want you dead. <laughs> your leaders want you dead. Uh, because of the account of him, many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus, as they should. He just raised a person from the dead. <laughs> all right, so they're all in danger, but here's, here's the good news. I told you guys good news is coming, right? Here it is. But his words are so powerful, and whose words am I talking about? I'm talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. His words are so powerful that he continues to keep Peter and John safe in that courtyard. Let's look at 8 and 9 again. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. Therefore, if you seek me, let these go their way, that the same might be fulfilled which he spoken. And by the way, this is back in 1712. Uh, the... the, the um, chapter before at verse 12 um, of those whom you've given me I have lost none so the great shepherd is still doing is still is still doing here this in this courtyard is still doing that in the courtyard of keeping them safe and not the action of Peter is accomplishing this task of safety well what was Peter trying to do he was trying to make it. He was trying to make things happen for himself, and um, that is not how you do it. And who is Jesus? He's the great shepherd. Here he is in ten uh, fifteen. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay my life down for the sheep. So are they all in danger? Yes. But what is Je what is Jesus doing? He's being the great shepherd and he is keeping his sheep safe, he is putting himself in the way of harm. Mm -hmm. That is what he's doing right now. All right, so Jesus responds. Should we pay attention? Yeah, the words are in red. <laughs> pay attention. <laughs> Jesus answered him, I spoke openly to the world. I always taught in synagogues and in the temple where the Jews always met, and in secret I have said nothing. There's a lot there to unpack, so here we go. Jesus answered, the Greek grammar just says that's in the, the uh, aorist and passive, and, that's, and um, it happened. We'll just say that. I spoke, or have spoken, now this is cool, it's a verb, but it's in the perfect tense. The perfect tense means an action has happened and it has continuous effects. Do we have his words today? Is it still having an effect? Yeah, I think that's cool. All right. I have spoken what? He spoke in, in these places and he was teaching. Go, going on for there, I have always taught, or have taught, is how Mounts puts that verb. It's eris again. So the action, the narrative is moving forward. And then, and in secret, uh, where, the, where the Jews always meet or come together how, is how Mounts puts it. Now it's, it's a verb, it's present. And it's in the middle voice. The middle voice means you did it to yourself. So you can see, what did we do today? We assembled right here, right? You can say that in the middle voice. You've done it for yourself. You did it to yourself. You're doing it for yourself. So 
Where, what, what, what's going on there? The Jews meet in certain places. All right. Is it public? Yeah. That's where he taught. That's his point. All right. And, uh, and indeed they know what I have said. I have said, again, it's, it's eris and active. So the narrative moves forward in John. So Jesus answers that anyone who has heard him, right, um, back in, uh, when we get to 21, he makes this point, why do you ask me, ask those who heard me what I said to them, indeed they know. Yeah. Um, these are all potential disciples. Okay. So anyone who has heard him, and let's, let's go even deeper than that. Anyone who has really heard him, as in they were seeking God and the Father has been calling them, who are they? There are, they are disciples of him because they were looking for God. They found God. And Jesus could say, you know what? There's people out there that could testify of me. You know why? Because he has other disciples. They're all over the place now. All right. So all these could testify that he spoke openly in the synagogues and the temples where the Jews always met, which gives a general answer to the high priest that there is no reason to question the twelve. So what's, what's, what's Jesus doing? He's protecting his flock. Where? In a courtyard. <laughs> He's protecting the two and the other ones that have scattered. He is standing right there in the way of danger. Peter is being uncomfortably questioned, right? 17, we read, that's where the girl talks to him and he denies him. And then you get to 25 and 26, and this is where he finally denies him two, uh, two more times. Now Simon, Simon Peter stood warming himself. Therefore, they said to him, you're not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of, of him whose ear Peter cut off, said, did I not see you in the garden with him? And then what does Peter do in 27? He denies again, and immediately a rooster crows. All right. So, Peter is being uncomfortably questioned right now, but he's still safe. He is still protected as Jesus gives his answers about his disciples and his doctrine. So, just sum this up. What did Jesus just do? He shielded his disciples and said, Talk to everyone else who's heard me. If I spoke of God, it will speak for itself. That was his answer. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> um, if my words mean something, miracles are going to happen. Amen. <laughs> People are going to get a hold of it, and their lives are going to change, and they might even get healed and filled with the Spirit. All right. Since we're in a Pentecostal church, I had to throw that in there. <laughs> All right. So, amen. Amen. I'm looking forward to Bill Ford getting here. <laughs> amen. <laughs> Let the prophecy flow. All right. It is true that Jesus taught his disciples in private that is true from 13 uh, 36 to 1633 this is all him in private uh teaching his disciples and then after that you get going to 17 and he's praying for his disciples but it was more on what he had already said publicly all right let's look at 659 and 820 jesus during that private time he continued to teach his disciples outside of, 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 of this, but, but he was elaborating more on what was going on. So it's 659, these things he said in the synagogues as he taught in Capernaum, that just shows you that he was teaching in public. And then you go to 820. These, these words Jesus spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple. And no one laid a hand on him, for his hour had not yet come. So that's confirming that he taught, right? Mm -hmm. But if you go back and read uh, chapters 13 through 16, you'll see that he's just elaborating more and more. Now, did we see that in the Synoptic Gospels? You guys remember that? Because his disciples would come to him and say, Lord, we didn't understand this parable. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah. <laughs> he says, it's for you to know the secrets. <laughs> Yeah, it's for you to know the mysteries. But for those who are not listening to me, it's just going to be a parable. So, yeah. 
All right, so his, minist his ministry was mostly public through the first 12, 12 chapters with moments of stepping away for security measures. All right, and what, we can look at those real quick. So there was times he had to step away, 7, 3 through 4. His brothers therefore said to him, Depart and get in, from here and go into Judea, that your disciples may also see the works that you are doing. They were saying, You're about to get killed, Jesus. For, none of the, for no one does anything in secret while he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. And then that's kind of where they were taunting him, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, Jesus is like, yeah, correct. So what did he do? He showed up late. He showed up by the direction of the, of, of, of the Father. And, of course, that translates to us today. We show up by the direction of the Holy Spirit. We show up and the Holy Spirit leads us to be there, and we get out when the Holy Spirit tells us to get out of there. Here we go. Uh, verse 10 of 7. But it, when his brothers had gone up, he also went up to the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret, right? Because he's being accused right now of, of teaching things in secret. He's like, no, I didn't. Verse 14. Now about the middle of the feast, Jesus went into the temple, and what did he do? He taught. What did he just tell the high priest, An Annas? I always taught in the temples, and I never said any, I didn't say anything else in, in private that, that didn't have anything to do with what I was teaching. Verse 26. Yeah, here, here's the people. But look, he, he speaks boldly, and they say nothing to him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is truly the Christ? Yeah, that's why they wanted to kill him. They were afraid that you were thinking that. <laughs> and then in 859, of course, this is always a fun chapter. Jesus just uses the uh, Old Testament name for God. <laughs> and this is what happened. And they took up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, so passing by. So there was times that he had to get out. and He had to be uh, secret. He had to be incognito. And he would talk to his disciples at that time. That's all recorded. But I like what the scholar was doing there. It's true. Everything he taught them in private, read it. It lines up with everything he was teaching. He's just elaborating on what those who want to know. So let me throw this in here. Um, there are millions of books written to help you understand the Word of God. So if you want to catch a sermon like you did this morning, that's great. If you want to know more about anything that Mel preached on or, or what Pastor Scott preached on, what could you do? You could read some commentary. <laughs> if you want to get alone and just really meditate on what Jesus had to say about it, guess what? He's going to talk to you. <laughs> Amen? You want to know more? We'll have more. Amen? It's not rocket science. It's just we make it complicated. All right, verse 21. We'll start to bring this, uh, start to, bring this to a close. Here we go. Jesus goes on, why do you ask me? Ask those who heard me what I, I said to them. Indeed, they know what I have said. All right. So, um, why, all right, do you ask is the, is the verb there, or do you question is how Mounts puts it. Again, it's a, it's a verb, it's in present tense. Every time Jesus starts to speak, or when people speak in the Gospel of John, it goes back to the present tense. But when the actions happen, it's all in errors. All right. Then he goes on and says, ask those. Here's question. Our question is how Mounts puts it. It's a verb. Now it's, it's, it, this is in the errors tense. And it's, it's, it's uh, in the active voice still. And now that M means it's an, it's an imperative. So he's telling them, well, go question them. Go ask them. And then here we go. Now we get the perfect tense again. Ask those who have heard. Who have heard is a participle. It's in the present. It's in the perfect tense and active voice. All right. Did you guys ever hear the word of God preached? Did it, does it have continuous effects on your life right now? Yeah. yeah, I love the perfect tense. It's so cool. Going on. All right. You have heard. They have heard me. That I. What I said, I said again. It's just this is just said in in the active uh, uh, the airs again. It's just moving forward and going on. They said to to them, indeed, they know 
There it is again. It's a verb. It's in the perfect tense. So, when you heard the word of God preached and you put your faith in Jesus, did something happen? Guess what? You know God. Yeah, you have been saved. Perfect tense. Pretty cool. And then going on with that, they know what I've said. Yeah. Who are these people that he's talking about? Not just potential disciples, but actual disciples. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jesus has his 12, but he knows who's else, who else is out there. And I'm about to prove that with my notes. Here we go. His disciples, again, are safe because no, anyone who heard him could be a potential disciple at this time. And he knows who are really his that he gathered publicly. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Let's go back to the beginning of this chapter of 18, verses 1 and 2. When Jesus spoke these, these words, he, he, he went out, to the, out with his disciples over the brook Kidron, where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. Now, you guys remember when we looked at this, he goes into a garden, and it's a walled-off garden. What is he doing there? He's acting like the great shepherd. He's keeping his flock safe. And Judas, who betrayed him, also knew of that place, for Jesus had often go th went there with his disciples, met there with his disciples. So, Jesus is there with his 12, right? What is he doing? He's keeping them safe. Now let's go to 8 and 9. This is where he, Jesus answered, I told you that I am he, therefore if you seek me, let these go their way. He's protecting them. And then this goes back to his prayer, that the same might be fulfill, fulfilled which he's spoken of those whom you've given me, I have lost none. Who was he talking to back in 1712? He was talking to the Father to keep those safe. All right. Let's go to the verses 666 and 68 through 70. Now, this is where Jesus loses disciples. And you're like, why are you bringing that up? I'll make my point here in a minute. 666 says... For at that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. All right. So when he started preaching some really hard things for people to understand, they got away from him, right? People dropped it. People were like, this, this Jesus thing is just too much for me. All right. He lost disciples at that time. But, he could, but they could have been like Peter, and this is how Peter answers, Jesus asked them, you know, he asked the twelve, do, do you want to go away also? Peter speaks up, but Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the, the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the, of the living God. Jesus answered, did I not choose the twelve, but one of you is a devil. <laughs> what did Judas just do? Betray him. <laughs> you go ahead and read 70. And he spoke of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he knew who would betray him, being one of the twelve. So, then you can go to uh, chapter 17. You can read the whole thing for yourself where he's praying for his disciples, but he's also praying for us. You can see that in there. And, of course, 12 is where he says, you know, none of those you've, 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 you've gave me were lost except for the son of perdition, that is, Judas which is interesting because it's the same title, title that Paul gives the Antichrist. The Antichrist is going to be like a Judas. <laughs> he's going to be a person who's going to seem authentic, but he's not. Yeah. So, and perdition is a fancy Bible word for destruction. They're going to cause destruction, but they're going to go to, to uh, destruction. They're going to be destroyed. What did Judas do in the Synoptic Gospels after he denied Jesus? He threw the 30 pieces of silver down at the priest's feet and says, I don't want this. And then he went out and hung himself. He destroyed himself, right? So, yeah, not good. But since in, in 2 Thessalonians we're talking about the Antichrist, there you go. I just tied some things together for us. All right, here we go. So let's end this on a positive note, amen? Jesus knows who his disciples are, and he protects them. Does he do that today? Yeah, we have the Holy Spirit. 
He will protect those who are his own. Now, if you're called to do something and you want to stop by the back table, the voice of the martyrs, there's usually a widow back there who's talking about her husband who continued to do what the Lord showed him to do until it got him killed. That does happen. If you get killed and you took up your cross literally like Jesus did and it caused you to it cost your life, uh, there's a special place in heaven for you. There really is. All right. I'm not telling you all to go out and get killed for Jesus. All right. But if you're called, my hat's off for you if you're a martyr for the truth. All right. Now, here we go. If you're in a dangerous situation and God's calling you to, to continue to stand up for him and stand up for the truth, that's a good thing. Why? In the Great Commission, we are told that he will never leave us nor forsake us, which means the Holy Spirit is with us. So, the Holy Spirit is like the, the, the great uh, shepherd. Jesus was the great shepherd. He shepherded his, his flock. He kept them safe. As you know, at the end of the Gospel of John, Peter did. He was told that he was going to give his life up for Jesus. And Jesus said, you know, what was in your heart and you weren't able to do, you will be able to do because I will make you that man. It's basically what Jesus was telling them. And today, we need to not fear those who can kill the, 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 the body, but fear him who can kill the body and the soul. And I just want to say it to all the platforms out there, I can care less if you de-platform me. I have an actual platform to stand on and a congregation to preach to. So if I ever lose this channel, oh, well, I love Jesus. I'll be there. I hope you get there too. Amen.